remember that nobody's better than anyone else here. Look what they do to you. Look what they do to me. You must be joking if you think that either one is free. What's up with it, everyone? LB Alchemist here with two of my close, awesome friends, EA Quetting and JD Temple. How the hell are you two? Great, great. How you doing, JD? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Thank you. Thank you both for having me on here. I really do appreciate it. Um, I'm doing well. Um, you know, like, if you catch me, like, a few hours ago... I wasn't doing so good. Like I have my uh, my moments, you know. I think like we all do, but um, I'm feeling a lot better now, and I'm Ooh. really glad to be here with you guys. So, were you raging? Because I know that's my thing. When I lose my shit, it's because like I just start getting mad, 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 mad. Then I start yelling at shit, and throwing shit, <laughs> fucking breaking shit. <laughs> well, I mean, I have had those moments. Um, I haven't had. I haven't went. I haven't experienced that one probably since like February. Nice. Um, now it's been more of like a melancholy deep depression and like and i think that you probably know more than anyone else like that can kind of go like part and parcel with working closely with azazel sometimes like you can definitely get pulled down into that that chasm of his that you know that i mean there's like there's so much to learn there but staying there for a prolonged period of time can can definitely wear on the the emotions. Dude, crack, cracking open this cosmic egg of magic is uh, it's not easy, you know. Like, because we are literally like tearing apart not just our view of reality, but reality itself. And so it's it, this is like, and, and it's, it's not when I say it's not easy. Like the repercussions of it, the fact that it's real, that it that it ripples out into everything, your entire world, your entire mm -hmm. reality, and then yourself. And so. It really people people are always wondering why black magicians are so crazy because we've we've eradicated reality and we don't know where to stand. You know that's 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 uh, um, that is so so yeah. Depression definitely comes along with this. Fucking anxiety, rage. It's like you can cycle through all of these emotions over and over and over again. <laughs> so yeah, and yeah. There's got there's got to be an output, regardless. You know, when it comes to those emotions, exactly what you're saying, like. If there's not any creative way to express that, and that's why I think with magic, mm. we do things to such an extreme, is because that's a way to express energy inside that might be flustered or whatever else, and be able to expand that out, and it's able to echo to help us out in ripples versus letting my anger. I mean, I know what you're saying. That's what I do. I mean, I'm usually pretty much. It's like ninety percent. I'm up. I'm feeling great, but like when I'm mad, like I'm. I'm just an animal at that point, you know, yeah. just furious. And uh, it sucks, too, because you can't really hide it when you're, like, one way all the time. Like, yeah, what's going on? It's like, fuck, you know. You have to be authentic with it and shit. But, damn, I do understand that, man. Like, that's why I love the run, honestly. That's, that's like, my one way to get myself out of my bullshit box that I put myself in. Yeah, I, I'll definitely be the first to tell you that, like, I am definitely an animal. Like I'm, there's a a primal part that has taken over at certain times that that I'm like, and and if y'all have experienced this, and I'm sure you have, that like I'm scared to even allow or even to get close to that ever again to that degree because of the the control that I had handed over to this primal side of myself you know and like what that is capable of doing like you know i mean damage wise i mean it could probably do some pretty miraculous things too but mm -hmm. um <laughs> when it comes out in me it's it's usually not a pretty thing but um you know juggling that juggling that has definitely been you know that that and just you know you see the uh the things that are unraveling in the world each and every day and and while my own personal life is making great strides and 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 i'm making i'm gaining momentum here and getting momentum there making personal gains here personal gains here like the world is on fire like across the ocean you know and so that's something that i have a little bit of a hard time 
juggling too, you know, keeping that stuff out of my reality, even though I know it's a big part of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it is. It, 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 I tell you what, it can be. I, I relate to that totally. Like, I'm making all kinds of advancement, fucking uh, just getting healthier and happier and more joyful and more powerful and more knowledgeable every single day. But then I see the whole world's burning down. Like, it, and so there's there's almost like this balancing act of like. It's meaningless. It's I, I have to I, I have to remind myself it's all meaningless. Like the, the whether it's wars or an apocalypse or whether we fucking live in a paradise forever, it doesn't matter. It's all fucking meaningless. And so I'm gonna spend my time just doing what I want to do. And for me, that's fucking ascent. That's magic. That's fucking. And it doesn't matter if the world's burning down or if the world's perfect. I'm still gonna. In fact, I prefer the world burning down because that gives me something interesting to work on. You know, fucking something interesting <laughs> mm -hmm. to do with my my power. If it's all paradise, dude. I, you know, it's like in the matrix where where uh, they say you know we've created multiple illusions for you and the first ones we made a paradise and you guys rejected it and and i think I, I do think that the human being that we wouldn't do well in a true paradise that we actually we blossom in the heart of the nuclear inferno i i totally agree with that i mean the time to evolve and want to change you know it's kind of like when you're talking about that anger and that's also kind of what I'm gonna what turns into like this the main conversation, which is our reason why we've changed from our path, from where we are raised and thought we were going to be, you know, for our, all of us, a sect of Christianity, and how that ended up just like jumping out of our life because it wasn't able to help. And that anger, I'd always have that anger towards that God because of what's going on in the world, because of thinking an all-knowing, all-powerful Creator shouldn't allow these things that are going on and these uh, different construction, you know, these different places of uh, worship, all the people there are all just two-sided individuals. They're a bit living a facade, playing a facade, and not answering different questions for the truth. And so it's like the whole world's upside down. And so that, I mean, that caused self-hatred self for myself personally. It's like, fuck this God because he's not helping me out in my life. He's not helping the world. And so that's what I think like magic for myself. It helps calm that rage because even though not everything's going on perfect in our reality, I do see as the bird's vision, like at a higher altitude, I do see the purposes for all these things that happen. So people could, more people can become awake. Not everyone. Some people are just asleep. But to then bring that whole awareness of what's going on so we can do that massive shift. And I do definitely see that. But it's not going to church. It's about fucking taking my shit into the circle and whatever ritual I need to do. And getting that revelation about myself. And uh, I don't know. I, I just find like the only way to help out off balance what the reality is going on, on the outside is knowing that when I throw a rock into that pond, it's going to echo like that, you know, forever. So how about I make a good goddamn echo, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, like, this is a, whether, whether the world's going crazy or not, this is such a crazy, cool experience. Just to like, like you say, have that bird's eye view and go, well, wait a minute, like, of all the different ways that everything could have assembled itself, it's actually miraculous that the molecules came together and the fucking shit formed, that anything formed. And, and then even from that, like, that we formed, that we're conscious, that we're actually God embodied. We're these monkey men with God's, with God's minds. And uh, it's, it's really a crazy, like, it's, <laughs> we shouldn't be here at all. Like, that's one of the things that, that's really interesting about what Azazel has told me. He's like, because I'm like, oh, you're going to give me a weapon. He's like, I'm going to give you a weapon, son. You are the weapon. You are you. You shouldn't be here. You're an impossibility that was injected into this reality. You're my weapon against against the system. And I was like, oh, I love it. Let's go to work. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, ancient history really does pull back into. I mean, that was a part of my whole change and everything else with my spiritual path. Is when as I look farther back into the Sumerian and talking about, uh, you know, the pre pre-man, whatever the hominid it was, that they didn't have a conscious spark, and then they were given that conscious spark by Inky, and then grew in as conscious beings and broke out of that slave-like system. But seeing that and seeing the empowerment versus this book that was constructed literally like within the past 1,500 years 
different parts and pieces were found by different people. And then a council of men come together and then tell me, oh, this is the right story. This one wasn't really a part of it. I know this sounds like this is from uh, the Sumerian tablets, but no, they 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 took it from us. Um, uh, uh, you know, just like that type of shit. They're trying to compile up this false narrative. And now I know the world sees more of what the government's doing. And they're false, fucking getting their money to push this agenda, this, that, and the other, even though they're more mar Marxist and whatever the fuck else they are inside the government. But, like, we're able to now see those things, and it's like we're finding ways that we're of control and of chains on us. And I really do, like, the whole process of ascent is getting rid of those chains. And uh, I, just, I just have found, like, when I was shackled like that and in, like, the Christian paradigm... The amount of self hatred. It didn't matter if I went to confession three times a week. It, it the questions weren't being answered. You know, they were just more were being brought up. And for me to go to this guy, even though he's really an asshole, and, but he's he's got he's in the cloth. Okay, so you better you better bow down to the church. You know, it's just so man made, so man made. Yeah, and it's and it's made like you said that the, there's the uh, it's a group thing. Um, and there's no room for individuality inside that group thing. If you're like, oh, yeah, you know, I, I talked to Jesus the other day and he said, don't worry about the crucifixion. That's not where it's at. Worry about the resurrection because it's actually the coming into your immortal self that's important. There, there are a lot of Christian cults that be like, whoa, whoa, whoa. No, it's about the crucifixion. That's where he died for our sins. That you start injecting your own, your own like interpretations. Of, they don't, they don't, that's not going to be tolerated at all. That's, uh, you know, that's, and that's the way what's interesting that I've found. Myself and several other people I've met with have had a face-to-face -face vision of Jesus. And every single one of them has shortly after been excommunicated from whatever church they're in. Wow. So, because the church doesn't want actual prophets in their church, that disrupts the entire system. And then, like, the occult and black magic specifically flips that around. It's like, it doesn't matter what I tell you to do, find out for yourself. It yeah. doesn't matter what the demons want from you. What do you want from the demons? It doesn't, you know, and you're actually turning around to bring that bring that ownership back to yourself. And knowing that you're worth what you're asking. Yeah. You know, yeah. that's the biggest thing, too. It's like, that really shapes you up as a person. Like, Belial is not going to give a fuck unless you stand up and assert yourself. Because that's what he's all fucking about, you know, and that self-empowerment. And it's like not till those dark nights that I've I really had that change of the essence, not only just who I am, but like the actual essence of what makes me who I am, go through those processes. And I just found too much staleness. This is kind of inside of a thought burning, you know, thought process of a dogma versus realizing that there is some truth into what the book's saying, but you can't tell me. If I told you I knew all the rules of the game and I'm never going to change and then I'm doing some evil bullshit to you and then I say, you know, hey, I'm an all-loving creator, you know, it just doesn't make sense. All those Bible verses in the past, I remember you had a uh, video that was up like eight years ago, man, and uh, EA, and I, I just was blown away on all the verses talking about, you know, killing all the men and take the women as slaves and the children as slaves. And then you can rape this woman and then give their fucking father 60 pieces of silver and then she can be your wife. It's like, dude, that God cannot just change. And then you're getting mad at people from Islam for their God and because you think it's so carnage. Like, let's look at the big schema picture. And if you say that that God changed from the last to this, you know, Old Testament, the new... That doesn't make any sense because now the God is from all loving, all this, everything else on top. It's just fundamentally does not add up, especially when you learn about other cultures and religions. And that's also why I think people are so like charged spiritually to hate. Like Christians in Islam have such kind of like a war kind of back and forth with each other from that shit. And it's like, once again, that God's just getting the sacrifice on the bloodline. I've been on the field of battle all the time anyways. It's just, it really is a dark war. And when you find the truth, you realize, at least in my heart, I feel as if I'm fighting on the good side. But it's just, I'm, everything's demonized, you know? Yeah. I know when I was in the Catholic Church, it definitely felt 
very, very dark. And my time there was very strange. And, and it was like later on in my life, um, because, you know, like EA, I was primarily Mormon when I was younger. And I didn't get into Catholicism until, I guess, my mid to late 20s. Was that your uh, your ex that pulled you into that? Yeah. You, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, did you did you did, did you sit through the whole thing of like <laughs> years of being with her and she's bugging you about church and you finally broke no, down? Or? No, no, <laughs> she didn't bug me about it at all. Actually, like um, that was going to be her thing, and and we had agreed that we were going to raise our children that way. You know, even if I was an active participant or not, that was what she was going to be doing, and kind of like. I guess like the kids were her department, so that would kind of coincide with her faith. Since like I didn't really have one at that point in time that was that was really um, a focal point in my life. <clears throat> Hers was a little more dominant, I guess. You know, I mean, she went to mass here and there, so I was like, okay, but, you know. But I guess after we'd been married and we started having kids, I kind of felt like it was important that. You know, if, if that was what they were going to be doing, that it seemed like it would be natural that that's what I should do, too. And I should I should like be, um, you know, the the spiritual authority in my household. And I guess that was the way that I thought I was expected to go about doing it. Right. Was to just mm -hmm. like plug into their system and do whatever it is that I'm supposed to do. You know, and, and I thought that it would bring us closer together as a family. Unfortunately, it didn't. Um, you know, I, I got all in it. I, I mean, I was up in it. I was I was reading um, at the mass pretty much every week and, uh, you know, lecturing and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. and so I was like, I was a part of it a little bit, you know, as much as I could be. And I was even going to like mass during the week and some meetings and stuff like fellowship things. So I was like really trying to plug into it. And the. Uh, the crazy thing was that like the like especially with that and it's probably just like that where i was at the, that point in my life but the more i plugged into that system the more the demons like came for me like sought me out and were like interjecting themselves into my life you know to where i was like literally having like spiritual warfare happening for you know for years Mm. Um, and and that's where you know your videos came into you know to be a huge part of my life you know you are you you know you of all people man and i appreciate that because i didn't know what the fuck was going on and i was like trying to figure out like what is happening to me here and like the you know that's how i found you was like through that discovery period of like my life falling apart you know being a part of the church and being like you know, I thought at the that point in time, like assaulted by demonic forces, and I was like trying to like combat them using the only methods that I knew how to use, like Judeo Christian methods of like exorcism and banishing and like holy water from you know from the church and like I even reached out to them and they didn't take it seriously, like what was happening to me. It was that crazy, um, but. Like, like you, you went, you went to your priest, like being like, dude, yeah. let's, mm -hmm. what, did, what did he tell you? <laughs> he, uh, some really weird things happened during that meeting, actually. Um, he was sitting there and like, it, this was really strange. At that point in time, I was like possessed and I could like feel, I felt like I was wearing an, uh, a space suit, like a, like a, like a NASA spacesuit, but the, the, that spacesuit was actually like a spiritual energy that had like enveloped itself around my aura, and it was with me like twenty four seven all the time for like at least ninety days. And during that time, I had some really crazy abilities, um, like tele telekinetic type of abilities and things that I can't replicate now, but I could do it then, like a son of a bitch. But um, it, you know it was really hard to handle having this spiritual energy kind of overlapping mine on a consistent basis for that long. But during this meeting, I was actually experiencing that at that time. And I was able to like read people's minds and things very easily, especially if they touched me and he put his hand on my thigh and he, he telepathically said to me, he, fr he froze. So he touched me and he froze and just stared at me. And just, this was probably like 30 or 40 seconds that he just kind of 
froze and was staring. And I was like looking over at my ex-wife, like, what the fuck is happening? You know, like cut my eyes over at her, like what is going on here? But the telepathic message was, what are you? I'm curious and I want to know. And as soon as I got that message, he like, he, just like in a movie, man, he, 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 he let go of me and kind of like shook his head and like kept talking. After the meeting, the first thing I said when I got outside with my ex-wife was like, what the hell was that? And she was like, what? And I was like, he froze in mid-sentence for like at least half a minute. She was like, no, he didn't. He was trying to like figure, he was trying to collect his thoughts. I was like, that wasn't no collecting your thoughts. Like it, I, it, it was, it was wild, but, um, <clears throat> you know, they, uh, I, I think that for me anyways, I feel that like, this my connection to this is definitely ancestral and maybe even like past life and that's why i think for a lot of us that are trying to plug into these modern day religious type of orders and and philosophies it's like it's just not really going to work for you because it's something that is never it's not in your blood so to speak to even do these things to be a slave, you know, you're not a slave mm -hmm. and you, and you, and you realize that through your lineage and through your blood, like that this, the, they're the, with what they're trying to do now and the way that they are trying to, um, you know, like, like totally pass off all of these great things and the atrocities that they commit and have committed, like, especially the Catholic church, you know, I mean, good God. The inquisitions and all of that like i would not doubt that that will not happen again you know and it could even be in our freaking lifetime some shit like that <clears throat> well that's definitely why the freedom right now we're, what we have here in america has to stay where it's at because this is the first time i've been able to be openly able to talk about any of these uh, experiences for that matter mm -hmm. or that knowledge and I mean, I definitely see it. That's like why we're going into this new era. But like right now, everything is very, it's all in glass, as one would say, you know, because like it has to keep going in a certain direction because if it falls off the trajectory, then everything will become a huge mess and be burned at the stake again. But I mean, just like the savagery of being burned at the stake for someone that was learning about medicine mm -hmm. and then they're saying that's witchcraft. For someone that speaks out anything against a head, can they can lock you up or behead you, you know? Like, that to me is just, like, such a control for power, and that just, that just speaks to me fear. You know, that's fear for the person doing the oppression as well as the people that are being oppressed. Like, that is the underlying rule, ruling ship of, especially the Catholicism, and that's what I experienced when I went to the church absolutely i mean the, i was fascinated with exorcism and i always felt like i wanted to do some holy works that where i could come combat and go against spiritual beings if i needed to like when i was just growing up like spawn was my favorite aesthetic like i'm a little kid and that's all i wanted was like why didn't they're like hey it, it looks so evil i'm like fuck yeah you know <laughs> yeah. but like, like it was just something that I feel like it is in the blood and our higher self knows, you know, the journey that we're going on, that we evolve in our conscious mind to be able to hit these different plateaus of like, all right, next level. But I do think that we've just always known inside like that. There's something kind of off going on, but you know, it takes everyone a different formula for them to make that gap, that jump to be able to break outside the shell. And um, I would love to know what it was for both of you for my, cause for myself, I mean, it took working with Salos because he was the most friendly of all the goetic spirits. So I was like, you know, I can, I can make that jump. I can't jump from the Christian God to Belial per se. That was way too much of an intergalactic jump. So I had to inch my way into the waters. And that, I mean, that for me was the easiest way because I was able to, learned that the spirit because i at the time i asked help for uh with some chick i was into he's like yeah that's cool but you got to quit cigarettes first mm -hmm. and that's so why i was like all right i'll put them all down that's fine i'll change my life 
And three weeks later, after I quit, I said, dude, why is the girl not into me? He said, because he's not good for you, and you needed to quit cigarettes. <laughs> and, like, that was, to me, hilarious, you know? I was like, if this spirit really didn't care about me, I would have got that girl, wasted five years of my fucking life, mm -hmm. and lost half of my assets, maybe even had a child that that kid had to go through an echo amount of pain because of some demonic being but no that's not what the fuck happened i bettered my life and i didn't have poison attached to me and that's something too people can talk shit about this field all they want but if you actually do the working and actually like uh, you tell spirit every morning you'll make sure you do a 30 minutes of meditation maybe that's it of being grateful and just sitting there whatever your path working is that shit is gonna fucking change you if you touch it and if it's not changing you, then you aren't really doing the work and you're not really making that much contact, you know? So that's just, it's just so huge. No, you know what? I've, I always felt like, uh, I mean, not always. Like, I think I started to find out as I got into my early teens that the church was just giving me a lot of, uh, that I was getting a lot of broken promises. And, 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 and I found this out when I was a teenager, but then, you know, I left the church. I, I did witchcraft through my teenage years and whatever. And then when I was around 20, I uh, went back to the church and, and, and spent a, uh, about a year, year and a half in the, in the church again, just pulling my life together and really seeing if this is for me. And then, and then, and then again, hit that, that broken promises moment because it's like, yeah, if you live by the gospel, you should have a happy life. You you know your marriage is going to be great. You're going to have a great relationship with your kids. You call on the uh, you know with with the Mormon, within the Mormon Church, there is a lot of like um, not a lot, but there are some specific procedures of like how to do blessings, how to call upon angels, you know, raising your arm to the square and saying the certain words and shit. And I just found like it didn't really work. I remember actually standing. You know, I, I was uh, what fourteen or fifteen years old, and. Uh, and I'm going, I, got, I, I have got to know, and I'm, I'm studying witchcraft on the side and really trying to figure out, like, am I, do I want to take that step? And um, so I went outside into my backyard, and I figured, you know, God is of, of the light, and so I'm going to just be underneath the sunlight. And, 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 and I had this idea that angels are going to appear to me in the sunlight. And so I rose, raised my hand to the square, said, by the power of the Aaronic priesthood, name of Jesus, I, uh, I call upon the ministering of angels. And I... And I I thought I had made it clear. I'm like, look, the devil's got a path for me, and I can see that path, and his path is looking like it might actually work. Give me something. Give me something that, that, that'll, that, that'll show me that this is the path I need to be on. Mm -hmm. And it was just not only dead silence, nothing happened, and I could feel like a sinking feeling in my heart. I was like, oh, man, this isn't. This isn't where I belong, really, was what it was. I was like, now, now I, and, and at that moment, I felt like I had to start reevaluating things. And so, so I spent probably about another year after that, a year or two after that, studying witchcraft and really, really uh, um, thinking about it a lot. And then finally, the, 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 the thing for me was, uh, was um, this girl that I, that, that I liked, Katrina. She, uh, she, uh, she was just absolutely untouchable. Already had a boyfriend. She was on her way to just uh, ditch out of high school altogether and go do her life and whatever. She's a hot chick. She'd always dress just like a complete whore, which I love. <laughs> <laughs> and so, so I was like, oh, man, this is, this is the chick for me. And so I start looking at, like, how do I actually take all these things and, and, make, and get her? How do I do a love spell? So I start researching it, and, and this is the early days of the Internet, so I'm at the school library, you know, love spell 101, and figuring it out. And they're like, well, before you can do a love spell, before you can do any spells, you got to do a self-initiation. I'm like, all right, boom, I'm in. And before I knew it, I'm starting to walk down this path, and then I forgot all about that girl. Like, I got so obsessed about magic, and it just opened this whole world up that it's like she just became an afterthought. So it was almost like the like I needed – it's funny because it's kind of like a similar thing that happened with you, El, where it's like you got the shiny object, and you're like, I want that shiny object. Okay, here's what you got to do for it. You start doing those things, and it's like, oh, I don't really care about that thing anymore. Yeah. Oh, 100%. Oh, 100%. And that's kind of like uh, I remember uh, about three years ago – maybe it was two years ago – you did the uh, uh, gate gatekeeper working, and it was the asthma day. Was mm. the gatekeeper at the time? 
And one of the things that you said during that was he likes to use the hypnotist watch and then it puts you in his trance so you go down the path that you're supposed to and learn what you have to. But once again, you find out like you're just being uh, pulled to the direction you need to. And usually with men, if it's their dick, then it's a lot easier, you know, versus X, Y, and Z. So it's like, all right, what is actually going on here in the process? But that's, like the, thing with, that's the thing with Asmodeus, just to jump in real quick. That's the thing with Asmodeus. Everyone's like, oh, he's the demon of love and, and the lord of lust and whatever. It's like, uh, he doesn't give a fuck about those things, other than the fact that he can use those as the carrot and the stick to, <laughs> to, to get us to do what we want. Like, it's not like he's he's a horn dog on the astral plane just looking to, to to get it on. He's actually very calculating and like he'll he'll give you the things that you desire, whether that's a, a partner or whatever it is. He'll he finds what you desire and he puts that right in front of you. And it is the hypnotist watch. He's like, look at this. Look, don't you enjoy that? And as you enjoy that, you start finding yourself going into a a, a completely different state and becoming a different person. That's mm -hmm. that's one of the interesting things about making contact with any of these entities, specifically demons. When they come, they give you, you know, you get an awesome flush of a good feeling. You get to, you know, usually you'll get whatever the hell you're asking for, whether that's answers or manifestations of things. But whatever you get at the beginning, that's just the beginning. Because after that, they, they, they continue to distill their essence into you. They continue to, to influence you and change you. Because that's, I think that's what, I think that's their whole ulterior motive is, is changing us, making us evolve in a very specific way. Absolutely. I think that unlocking of your DNA when you're talking about, you know, the black alchemy, like that's an absolute from my physical appearance has changed dramatically since I've worked with spirits like I'd work with, you know, the saints and I was happy I did that because I was able to kind of learn the functionality of kind of summoning up a goetic spirit. Because, you know, it's like, all right, they kind of have their own attribute, their own energy, you tap that into. But it wasn't the amount of change. Like, that was like an answered prayer versus an absolute change. The way it shaped my eyes actually are. The fact that I just got rid of all my hair. I mean, you guys have two luscious <laughs> bits of hair, you know. But my ass, I had to go the J.S. Gear around. I had to go to <laughs> shave my fucking head. Um, but, I mean, even that was a lesson in and of itself, you know. I had problems with uh, self-esteem. And I worked with Belial. And the first thing he said was, shave your head. Mm -hmm. I'm like, what are you talking about? And he said, shave your fucking head. You're going to sit here and complain and hope people have some appearance of you. How about you quit worrying about that and step it up and move on. And, you know, now when I shave my head, mm -hmm. I think about anything that's attached to me throughout the week. That's been some bullshit. And then I just shave that off and then put it down the drain, you know, and I've heard both things. I heard long hair. It's kind of like you have um, more mm -hmm. sensors with your hair to be able to pick up the uh, physical or astral and stuff. Mm. I also heard that bald people are really good. Bald people fucking whatever, are good with tele telepathy better. And I don't know if there's any nuance in any of that shit or what. Well, yeah, in, in um, LeVay's book, The Satanic Rituals, he's got a couple rituals in there that he's, he's like, you know, you must shave your head before this. And, and you know, one of them is you're working with electricity and so so your hair could get in the, the way or whatever. But... Uh, but also there is that thought that it can allow, you know, but whatever. But it is like, I think it's more like you're finding, rather than like one one way being better than another, it's more like you're finding your own personal representation of your God self in this form. You're like, how, how you know, because I'll do that. I was not happy with like my look for most of my life because I was trying to look like what I wanted, what other people thought I should look like, you know, cut your hair a certain way, wear the button up shirt and whatever. And at some point I just had to say, yo, fuck it. Actually at some point, exactly 2017, I remember the exact moment where I was like, I am not going to the barber again. It's that time I got an appointment, but fuck him. And <laughs> just uh, decided, you know, it's like, I'm, I'm going to stop worrying about how other people want me to look. That's funny. Cause I actually had that yesterday. I had a interesting experience with the Zazo. So, I'm just kind of bumming around the house. It's Saturday, so I uh, I just put on some like uh, Batman um, pajama pants and uh, and just this baggy shirt and fucking. I'm just chilling around the house. Well, my friends are like, "Hey, there's an Oktoberfest coming. Uh, you know, going to be in town. You want to come over out to the Oktoberfest with us?" And I was like, "Oh, dude, that'd be awesome." I take a look in the mirror and I was like, "Dude, 
I look frumpy. This shirt makes me look fat. This, these pants are fucking, you know, pajama. I got to get changed. And Azazel actually came in and was like, don't just go as you are. And I was like, go as I am, dude. I look sloppy. He's like, why? You're going to go hang out with friends. You're not going there to meet chicks. You're not going there to pick up on anybody. You're not going there to be to, for people to love you. You're going there to for with people that already love you. They already love you. They already think you're awesome. Go hang out with your friends. And I was like, fuck it. All right, cool. Just got in my car and drove <laughs> drove there in my pajama pants. And I and that's like that's rare for me because I usually want to look a certain way or whatever. E- even though it's my way, I'm trying to look. I, that 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 was kind of brought out to me yesterday. Even though it's my way you're still concerned about how you look to other fucking people. And that's something that's a continual. Keep dropping that. Keep dropping that because that does not matter. Yeah, no, I totally agree. I think if you just shine authentically and not worried about the shit, which that's the only reason why anytime I have any marijuana in my system, I get a little bit too sensitive to all the other energies around me. Mm. And it's not that I'm not like that when I'm sober, but I don't give a shit when I'm sober. When I'm high, I'm not able to override that system because it's like I can feel it and, oh, what's the opinion, all that versus, look, I'm just freaking going to go as me and I know I'm, I know my worth, so who cares what fucking outfit I'm in? You know, I don't have to whatever because at the end of the day, I mean, it doesn't matter what mask you have on your face, you're going to see the right light that shines through it. But I do think you're really on to something from our higher selves know what we truly look like. Cause I actually had a, uh, I don't know if I've ever showed you all this picture, but, um, my sister before she passed away, well, that's a whole fucked up situation, but before she passed away, she could always see spirits and see high people's higher selves. And it's back when I had hair and I asked her to draw it for me and she, uh, she drew this right here. <laughs> it's just backwards. It's a little wow, backwards. But but the top here is bald, and then this is like my shitty hair. She's like, see, even your higher self's laughing at you for caring about your hair. And so a bald like, hey everyone, like I mean, it just makes fucking total sense. So you know, that's funny. I, I definitely feel like that's definitely on to something. Um, but JD, I did want to ask you, um, with the succubi and incubus, I know that was a huge part of your you know transition into you know call it the catholicism to a black magician yeah and i just didn't know if you could just kind of get into that a little bit more and yeah. uh because yeah, sure. i mean after all like you provide that service for me and i want everyone to know like that is a top of the line true authentic service um, and she's been nothing but a sweetheart she's fucking incredible uh and Helps me get shit done. <laughs> she definitely oh. is like getting some shit done. That's so. how you, that's how you know JD's a master because anybody else calls on a succubus and they are not a sweetheart. <laughs> 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 the, fact that, the fact that this man can sweet talk the succubus before he sends it to you, hell yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, hey, it's 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 all Lilith, like really and truly. You know, like it's uh, you know, I, I definitely just you know, I'm kind of just there as a an, a, an officiant of it, but you know, it's it's definitely thank her for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, with that you know like <laughs> I mean that's really where everything started for me like like I had so one of the first incidents where I had a sleep paralysis incident and I was sleeping in this little sofa thing like across from my wife we had this like sofa thing that was from this um, this really old um a state house on, in this vineyard in Charlottesville, Virginia. And I think it's haunted, but that's beside the point. I fell asleep on it and I woke up and, and I just, Azazel has made it, made it known to me at that, that this was him at that moment in time. I didn't realize that was him, but um, I, th- I woke up on my back and I felt like I had a beast, like a beast on top of me. Like I couldn't see my head was turned to the side. So all I could see was the wall, but my eyes were open, but I couldn't talk. I couldn't move. I felt like hands on my shoulders and I felt like knees like digging into my thighs and it felt like, you know, in my mind's eye, like my, my third eye was just cracked wide open during that moment. And I could like get a really clear vision of what it looked like that was on top of me that I couldn't see. Like I could see it like, uh, astrally, I guess. And it was some kind of like big hairy beast and it said, what are you going to do now? 
And as soon as it said that, before I could like, you know, even answer it, it was just gone and that was over. And like that kind of initiated everything else that happened after that. So it was like the next day, these two owls appeared on my property and they were just there all night, every night making noise. They were never around before. Maybe like the next week, as soon as I would get into bed every night, I would start feeling like the, it was like the atmosphere in the room would change almost. Like it would start to feel like the room was closing in on itself and I could hear these popping noises. Like to me, that's like, it is like when when one dimension is overlapping with another one to a greater degree than normal or something it like may it creates this pressure and like a pop almost and like mm -hmm. i started getting very used to this feeling and and it was scary and it felt it would make me start to get a lot of anxiety uh, like immediately but i would just be laying there and and i would hear i'd feel the pressure and i would hear the popping noises and then like on the lower corner of my bed it would start to sink down like somebody just sat on the bed like a person right like it i could see it i could hear the bed creak i could feel it all that and i'm like scared to death like what the fuck and like it felt like then like it felt like it just felt like a torso of a person fell over in the bed like it felt like a big heavy just like a half a person i know that sounds stupid but that's what it felt like it felt like it just fell over at my feet but then at that point in time it turned into like this this uh energetic serpent that started coiling up around my ankles and moving up my legs and like as it's moving up me it like just starts to envelop my whole body and like starts to become like highly sexual highly sensual like the craziest full body orgasmic energy you could ever imagine. And then it would just like go all the way up to my head and it would come back to my feet. And it would just do this for like hours and hours and hours. And it would happen like every night, as soon as I got into bed and like, then it would start to happen like anytime, you know, like I could just be sitting there like watching TV and all of a sudden this like, it's like a heavy weight. Um, it feels like the, the thing they put on you at the dentist office to like block the x-ray shit that heavy vest thing it yeah. felt like one of those just like drops down on you like all of a sudden this heavy weight's just on you and it, and, it, and, it, and it almost like crushes you it's like a crushing like a crushing weight it'll start to just like push you down into like the chair or the sofa and at that end at the same time it'll be like a full body orgasm too and so it's like it's just like that was happening just like constantly all the time to me and you know you would think that you know i didn't know what to think i was like what in the fuck is going on here and like so one of the first times too like when i really got concerned about it was like i went to bed one night and so I'm just going to say my ex. My ex is you know, in bed. Like, I don't want to talk about her too much on here because I know she doesn't like that. Yeah. But this is just what I experienced. Okay. Oops. So this is just what I experienced. Um, <laughs> she was laying there asleep and I could feel like this vibration. And it felt like the whole bed was vibrating. And I was like, what the fuck? And like, it was like wigging me out. Right. And so... I'm like, she's asleep and I'm like feeling the bed. The whole bed feels like it's vibrating. And like the closer I get to her, the stronger it is. And like, I put my hand like up on her stomach and it felt like it was like inside of her. Right. And I was like, what the fuck? Like, and, and like I, and at that moment I felt something like push up on my hand and it fucking scared the shit out of me. And I like woke her up and I was like, yo, 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 like something is happening. And so like that kind of stuff was like normal shit for me like every day like this crazy kind of stuff um the the last experience that or not the last one but one of the craziest ones and i feel like that this was a manifestation of the incubi or the succubi rather two of them rather because i think that i have like four of them around me or attached to me basically but I was, a, I was on the sofa, me and my wife had just had a fight. I was getting ready to go to sleep on the sofa. And I'm getting, I'm laying there on my back, looking down the hallway. And all of a sudden these like, these things are massive. I'm talking like three foot in diameter, like 
big, huge beach ball size golden orbs. And they started coming down the hallway and they were coming towards me. And I was like, oh, oh my God, like fucking I was scared as shit. And uh, I was just going to like, OK, I'm just going to pretend like I'm asleep. And I had my arm like this and I was like looking out from under my arm like, oh, God, they got closer and closer and closer. And I was like, oh, shit. And like they basically just kind of flew by me and they went out the wall of the house and they were gone. But as they went by me, what well, this crazy electrical, static, electrical, sensual, orgasmic energy like went all through my body. And I was like going like, uh, <laughs> you know, kind of, you know, like some movie shit, man. Like and, and so, um, you know, I just I've had so many crazy tangible experiences and like all of this was like very early on in my path, you know, and like not knowing what these things were, uh, it made me have to you know, search the internet and search the libraries, try to figure out like what's going on because the church just thought I was crazy. Mm -hmm. You know, and most people just thought I was nuts, you know? And so, um, making sense of that kind of stuff when you really don't know what it is, you know, like a lot of people, I mean, of course, everybody wants to have these experiences that haven't had them and they are great experiences. I mean, they are scary, but I've learned a lot from it, but, you know, you have to keep in mind too, you got to live your normal life while you're having these experiences mm. too. And so, um, you know, sometimes biting off more than you can chew is definitely the only way to grow. And maybe that's, you know, they know what you need and, and they're going to give it to you. Um, they definitely hammered my ass and they made damn sure that like, you're going to end up where you're going to end up and we're going to kind of help sculpt and mold you into what you are supposed to become. Because I definitely wasn't on this traje trajectory by any means. Mm -hmm. I was a khaki wearing, you know, <laughs> slick back fucking and like businessman, daddy doo doo, picket fencing, you know, changing the oil, cutting the grass, and that's all wonderful things. And I and I love that. I love that. But that wasn't my authentic. That's just not me. It wasn't me. I was definitely having to like put on a charade every day. Mm -hmm. And I think that's like whatever a lot of people are at, especially in regards to their religion. You know, they're having to kind of like you know live in two different worlds and like portray this one version of themselves but deep down and when they leave that church they know what they're doing they know how they're living their life uh, well, one of the interesting things that i've seen is that uh some of the some of the specifically like students and clients that i've had that are some of the most promising powerful people um are living that double life and like I almost feel like sometimes like that that must add a little bit of power the fact that they're hiding it from their wives they're hiding it from their their bishops and priests or whatever they're they're pretending but then when they, they you know like one guy i know has a um storage unit that he, he it's a whole temple he goes inside a storage unit whole temple in there that he goes in and does a shit and his wife doesn't even know it exists and uh and like that kind of secrecy that can add something to it so Take but it, as, as, I agree. I agree. That it would. I mean, and, and I was doing that. I will have to agree because I mean, I was doing that and had to do that for a long time. And I think that definitely added an element of power to it. Now that I think about it, it for sure yeah. it is. As, as long as you, as long as it's not tearing you apart, because it was tearing me apart trying mm -hmm. to live both lives. You know, trying that's, to trend, you know. that's exactly it for myself. And try going to church and then also having people do ritual cast for me and I was learning it that eventually ripped me into two you know I feel like there's so much like I'm not just walking and waltzing into my nine five whatever saying uh, I do ritual magic every day you know like I'm just yelling that out like I'm just being me but if it comes up in an authentic conversation then of course it's gonna happen but <laughs> When I was just to butt in real quick, well, when I was like maybe three fourths of the way through my gatekeeper operation of, of the nine gatekeepers, um, my relationship was falling apart pretty quickly. My last relationship, and so remember we went and took a, a walk to go watch the sunset together, and we're standing there watching the sunset, and I just remember I told her, you know, I uh, I can feel the magic is pulling me. And you're holding me to the ground. Everything around me is holding me to the ground. It's like bolts that have bolted this rocket into the ground. But the problem is the rocket's already firing. It's already trying to blast off. And so those bolts is just ripping my life apart. And she goes, she goes, well, that doesn't, well, first she says, 
She says, I, I can see that you see that you have some important work to do, but I'm afraid that you would sacrifice everything for it. And I say, yeah, that's, that's what I'm feeling. That's the, that's the point I'm feeling I'm at, that I have to go all in. And she goes, it doesn't make sense to me. If you say you're being ripped apart, like, turn off the engine. And I'm like, I, I can't. I don't know. There's, there's no off switch to make this stop. That once you start this process of ascent, I, 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 and honestly, I think that's what was behind a lot of my substance abuse and sex addiction and everything else was trying to put dampers on this whole system because it was because uh, it was impossible to live both lives at once. I had to make that choice. Um, but yeah, that was just really interesting conversation where she's like, you know, why don't you just shut it off? Why, if witchcraft is causing this, stop the witchcraft. And I'm like, I, if it was that easy, babe, it would be done. It would have been done a long time ago. But but like like you said, JD, it, it hunts you down. It hunts you down. A hundred percent. But you were saying earlier how the owl appeared. And it's funny because during that time period when I was kind of going back and forth doing magic, I remember yelling out on a dirt road, if there's anything out there that wants to come attached to me, then go ahead because I'm done with my life. And then I come back and I started just getting this like drag down on me. You know, I was feeling like I was watched. And I start hearing owls every night. And one night I'm seeing an owl just looking at my dude, windows. Dude, they're creepy, man. Dude, they're scary dude, sounding. Dude, dude they're yeah. like, especially if you look out your window and it's standing, staring in, looking at you. You're like, dude, what the hell? And I knew something weird was going on. But then it was the same time period where I'd see this undead girl that would always be next to my bed. And I am starting to connect the dots where I don't know for certain if it's a psyche buy or not. And back then, and she was the one that came to watch over. But the thing is, is there is a difference between feeling comfortable. Like for me in my original chamber, like I don't ever feel like those dagger eyes looking at me, you know, versus like when you're in a haunted place and there's just all that, that negative energy where you feel like you're being watched no matter what you do, no matter you cover your eyes and stuff. So back then I just feel like since I wasn't authentic with my energy, it was creating that energy probably off of me, really. I was probably the battery for it and uh, made it. So it was like, kind of chaotic, always feeling like I'm being stared at and all that. But I just found that to be so damn interesting, you saying about that about owls. and so all I, got that. A, I got a crazy owl story to throw in here. It was like <laughs> okay, right, after, right after I finished my uh, my final initiation into Haitian Bodan with, uh, with Baron de Prince, he uh, – well – I'm driving down the road. It was just like literally a couple nights after that point, that initiation. I'm driving down the road with my wife and in the seat, my ex-wife and my daughter in the uh, in the back, and um, it's a pretty dark night. I don't even remember where we're going, but I see right in the middle of my lane, and it was it was actually like on a bridge right in the middle of my lane, and and the bridge is such that like it's got um, barriers on either side, so you can't really. There's no wiggle room, you know. It's a one lane fucking bridge or whatever. So uh, there's a um, an owl just uh, chilling there. You know, looks. It was the size of a small child. I thought it was a small child standing in the road in the middle of the night. I was like, so I stopped the car. I stopped the car and get like maybe ten feet away from it, and I'm like, is that because because I'm like, is that a kid or whatever? So I so so the car's just idling there in the middle of the road. And I'm like, what the fuck? That's an owl. And it's just, its eyes were, were spooky. Like, and not just because they're big eyes or whatever, but like, I felt like its eyes were speaking to me and pulling me into them. And so I was like, what the fuck? And so I just stood, sat there for a second. My wife saw, hey, uh, are we going to go? I'm like, um, the owl's in the way. So I honk and it um, does, doesn't move. I go get close to it. I got probably just a couple feet away from it from my bump with my bumper before it flew off. And it was, uh, and it just fucking boom, wings come up and it just, it didn't even look like it was flying. It looks like its wings just came up and it just floated up. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> but uh, so I called the prince afterwards and I'm like, I get, I get home and I'm like, bro, bro, I wake him up for him. He was living in New York. So it's like two o'clock in the morning for him. I'm like, hey, what the fuck is this? And he's like, no. Nah, uh, birds are not just birds. Like birds are not just animals. They, they always they're messengers, and so so yeah. But um, yeah, I find out with crows too. But that's yeah, very much, the uh, crows have been very prominent in my reality here lately. Like crazy, crazy. Especially yeah. when it's just like thoughts in the head. Like especially when I'm thinking about Shimyaza 
uh, I'll just start thinking about the watchers, and all of a sudden, there's these one three that are oversized crows. I'm like, that's a fucking half the size of my leg here. And then they're all there, they fly, and then four hours later, I've dr- driven like 13 miles away. It's the same three crows, I swear. And it's like, you guys are just teleporting. You're not really <laughs> flying. like, And you're honking, coming right in, right in front of me to do where and then go out of the way. Like, you guys are funny. Like, I definitely believe that they're messengers. Sarah and I have been trying to connect with the crows on our property, and we actually put an altar out in the yard, and we've got, like, we're leaving food, and there's, like, various crystals (laughs) there and stuff, and we're trying to, like, get them to bring us things because they will start bringing you, like, really cool shit, and they'll, like, take what you have to give them. So um, we've we've been messing with that now for about maybe a month. But they're, they're coming around more and more. And, and, you know, the crazy thing is, like, since we started that, you know, not only am I seeing the crows everywhere on our property, but they, I'm seeing them, like, out and about, like, everywhere right now. Um, you know, and, and they were they were delivering a message to me the other day of, like, of basically, like, you know, making sure that I'm doing what I need to do to allow room in my life for my magic to manifest because, the, like, basically, like, I have to be ready to bear the responsibility that the man that the manifestation is going to require. So, um, you know, I've, I've really been uh, meditating a lot on that and, and looking at the areas of my life where, you know, I know that I need to make room and that I need to prepare better and that, you know, I'm asking and, and trying to make these certain things happen, but yet I'm not making room for them in my life to even occur, you know? And so, mm-hmm. you know, that's something that I've been, you know, like the, the crow specifically has been trying to instill here lately. Mm. Yes, dude, that's beautiful. It's it's that's, hard to like ask for something for it to be on your plate if your plate's already full, a hundred percent. Especially, you know, and especially that, like like even having your plate full, but like most of us have got our plates over full. Like, yeah. like you know, most of us living an American life and 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 working and trying to achieve the things we got and having a family and a girlfriend and whatever, like. Whatever, all, all of these, dude, we, we pack our lives full, uh, and a lot of it with a lot of bullshit. Like, <laughs> one thing I'm going to say, ever since I got kicked off of uh, social media, dude, that's freed up so much time and energy that I was just throwing away, just throwing into the world. And as soon as I had that, like, I was actually kind of bored and didn't know what to do with myself when I first mm-hmm. just couldn't jump on Facebook anytime I wanted to. Yeah. But then, uh, then it, like, pretty quickly, dude, I remember actually... It was like a few days after getting kicked off of social media, I I was going for a walk. I was just out for a walk in my backyard, beautiful fucking trees and nature and shit. And I uh, I had a thought like, like when I was finished with my walk, I was like, fuck, there was not a single moment there that I wanted to take a picture and upload it to the internet or that I missed that. I was just in the moment, just cool. Like, and, and that was a big shift for me because it's almost like, I was living the moments of my life to be able to make a post out of them. Yeah. Yep. No, I, I get that. And that's, because that. yep. because there is a, there's definitely like an inspired message you can get. And that could be great content a hundred percent. And like, I know if both of you, you share your magical journey, your magical secrets and making videos to help people out those one-on-ones. But sometimes it's, it's like, is the sacredness being given to me for my journey for me? Or is it for me to be able to give it out to others as well? You know, and that's that's kind of like I was trying to get myself to make constant content for my Instagram, all these other things and try to get in that algorithm of shit. But then for me, it hit a point where it's like, I'm not going to make something that's clickbait because that's not me. I just want to tell you what the fuck it is. It's a real thing. Be authentic with it. And then also want to be doing it. Mm-hmm. Like, like maybe I want to go to, go to a place and eat food and not test what their fucking quality is of the food, saying, I'll get this an eight and a half out of ten. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. how about you just say, like, goddamn, thank you for this meal and this conversation I had with who I am here having my meal with. And so I, I definitely, yeah. I, I'm finding more of that balance. Well, and you know, the thing, because you, you put a really important question there, like, is your ascent just for you? Um, and I don't think it is. I don't, I don't, I think we're in a group. I mean, like I look at you two gentlemen and like the shit that I've, you're saying you learned a lot from me. I've learned a ton from both of you and from our interactions, from fucking just listening to what you guys have to say, but also from teaching you like this whole process, none of us are doing it alone, but 
there's this what I'm thinking of as you're saying this is uh, in in alcohol and and uh, substance abuse recovery they've got a saying that you, you you have to do it for yourself first before you can do it for anybody else. So if you want to get sober for your kids, that's cool. You got to do it for yourself, not your kids. Because if you do it for your kids, it's not going to stick. You're going to fucking resent your kids for it. You're going to, oh, I wish I could just smoke a joint right now, but you little fucks, you know, whatever. <laughs> um, it, but if you're really doing it for yourself, then you have what you need to be able to show your your kids or to show your 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 you know significant other, whoever whoever is important in your life. Yeah, in a way you're doing it for them, but you have to really authentically do it for yourself first. And then the natural reaction is going to be the positive for everybody around you. So similarly, like, because that, that, was, that was the addiction I got into on social media was constantly, if I didn't have an original thought, by God, I'm going to sit here until I get one that I'm going to inspire everybody with and they're going to love me. And then I post that shit and then you know what I'm doing? I'm checking my Facebook every five minutes to see who liked it. Oh, dude, it's sick. <laughs> it's it's sick. And at the same time, like when I, because I'll still find myself getting into that with like YouTube. I'll watch a video on YouTube, leave a comment, and then I'll see if somebody's commented on that comment. And then it's like, fuck, it, it's a drug. And in a way, I can feel what it's doing to my body. It's flushing my body with these feelings of uh, that, that really you should only be getting from, from a substance, but you're getting it from this electronic device. It's nutty. It is. And, 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 and you got to know. Those places. <laughs> Like yeah. you just, you just, as soon as you know that truth, you know, like I can't get my happiness outside of myself. Like that's when it can become a problem. And that's also, I think the only way you can become a better individual is if you're doing it for yourself because that resentment, that lo that significant other, I'm going to quit all these substances just for you. Oh, and uh, I'm going to change up my life. It's like, well, that person's not there. Then not only are you going to be depressed about that, but then you're going to use all that crutch was, to then just devastate you. So sometimes we have to not real, you know, actually not not, but actually know whether or not we're setting ourselves up for failure. You know, because if you depend on anyone else outside of yourself, that's when the problems arise. And and honestly, to do and to do authentic, powerful magic too. Like once again, kind of stemming from earlier, like it has to come from within. You can't just be like, oh, everyone on online said I should do this ritual. I, I think I got the pass, you know, or I got enough likes so I, I can post this now. It's like, just do you, be authentic with it, and move on, you mm -hmm. know, don't stick with it. Yeah. Um, now, what, uh, for both of you, uh, we'll, we'll start wrapping this up. I'd love to know, uh, for you guys just announce any group workings or next projects coming up and just anything along those lines that you'd like to plug. And uh, whoever would like to go first, more than welcome to. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll hit it first, I guess. Uh, um, <clears throat> all right, so I've got a uh, encyclopedia of vampirism coming out Halloween. This is by N.B. Blackwoods. So you can go to becomelivinggod.com slash encyclopedia. And um, and that's that's really cool. It's got So he gave me his manuscript. He's been telling me about this, this book for about a year, and I've been a little scared of it because I'm like, dude, Nobody wants to read a fucking encyclopedia. Like, nobody wants that <laughs> shit. Come on. You might put it on your desk and you'll thumb through it every now and again, but this isn't interesting. He turned in the manuscript uh, a couple weeks ago, and so I looked at it. Thank God it's not an actual, uh, like, encyclopedia, <laughs> but it is, it, it's basically what he's done is he's gone around the world, physically traveled to, to different places around the world, and uh, contacted different cults that will uh, worship different... Um, uh, uh, undead masters, so Dracula's one of them, you know, uh, um, uh, what's her name, uh, I can't remember her name now, the one, the, the one lady that would cover herself in, uh, virgin's blood and shit, uh, Bathory. Bathory, yeah. Yeah, so, so he's, so, like, those are just two of the big names, but he's gone all around the world, because every part of the world has one of these figures, one of these vampires that existed at some point, so he goes around the world, finds people that actually have their, their, their native understanding of this uh, of these entities and these uh, sometimes they're entities like gods that they worship. Sometimes they're people that became vampires. And so so he's got like a whole. Each chapter is one of them that he highlights uh, one particular uh, uh, undead master, lord or lady, and uh, and then gives you full workings from that region, like authentic workings to call these uh, these entities up. So wow. that's gonna be badass. That's coming out Halloween. As far as group workings, you know. Shit. I, uh, on, uh, there's something going on on the Discord. I think it's just a small little Discord channel that I'm going to be doing, uh, um, 
I'm not. I'm not. I'm not presenting this. I'm just going to be taking part in this uh, this ritual to call forth King uh, King Mahad. I don't know. It might be his name, Mahar. God, I can't remember. It's 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 a Jin King. I can't remember his name now. So uh, so I'm going to call him this Jin King. Uh, I'm trying to think of what to do because every every month over on my Odyssey channel, um, I do a uh, a group ritual, and I'm trying to think of what I'd want to do for for like a Halloween group ritual. I don't know. It's a great time. Like the gates are all open, the doors are all open. So I'm not sure what I'll do for that, but yeah, something. You know, well, November first is you know the Day of the Dead, so you could always have an appreciation for the dead. I mean, that's always. There we go. <laughs> that could actually be really cool. Yeah, do a do a necromancy ritual and 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 uh, yeah, celebration for the dead. Uh, maybe hold the door open so those who are parted can pass on if they wish to. And yeah, because that's a, that's an interesting thing. I just throw this out to you guys real quick. It kind of seems weird that like when there's mass deaths, specifically when there's mass deaths, there, it's a harder time for spirits to move on. And so sometimes like opening doorways, opening portals, and guiding them through that light can actually be really helpful. That's a, actually this haunted mansion I just checked out yesterday. We're going to have a overnight stay and stuff here. And uh, that's something I was kind of asking. I'm like, why don't these spirits want to go? And the guy said, then they're more than welcome to go. And the, ga and the gates are open. But these spirits want to stay. Mm. And so it does kind of make me feel like maybe they have all that they need inside of this mansion you know people coming through to see the haunted place to get the feet off that energy and all that but uh yeah that's a beautiful though but the day of the dead man let all the spirits free you know that could be awesome that could be awesome just yeah just open the door and the ones that want to go you can go the ones that want to stay fucking stay yeah yeah have, have a sick on me what about you jd what what you got well up? uh sarah and i have a have something coming up on the 13th which is this friday the 13th um we're going to dc again and we're going to be performing this ritual with asmodeus and azazel at the washington monument um, this is something that I've done like three times already. So this will be my fourth time anointing it. And so um, everybody that participates in this, basically it's going to, I'm going to provide invocation instructions as, for this as well. But there's like a, there through the, the magical mysteries that are imbued within that monument, when you connect with it in that way, there is a current called Amatas that you can connect to and it, it cloaks your magic it cloaks you physically but it definitely cloaks your magic um that's one of the big highlights of this is it's it, it protects you like crazy that monument is protecting this nation and like that's something that azazel has been showing me more and more like connect with that monument connect with the power of it connect with the mysteries of it um it's it's a it's a big numerology thing as well so everyone that participates too i'm going to channel a power number for you that you can use to connect to that current of amatas and to the the power of the monument um and i know this sounds crazy but this is something that i started doing in february really when the world started going really really nutso um the spirits were coming to me and just being like yo like you need to do what you can do magically to protect not only yourself but to protect like our nation basically and there's already things in place that, that do protect our nation and that do cloak what we're doing because that's a th like we're using some pretty ancient um egyptian uh magic that's like really enshrouded this that like the like north american continent anyway and a lot of things that we do go undetected and and a lot of other countries cannot figure out what the fuck it is that we are doing um and this this is this is part of that um and, and i don't understand it all and, and that's for sure it's something i've been plugging into since february um but i've gone to the poseidon um monument on virginia beach it's like a 30 foot tall uh, monument of Poseidon, and i've anointed that with my blood uh, several times i perform ritual there uh just to protect our coastlines and protect our waters and then i've been doing the same thing too with the washington monument in order to protect me my family my loved ones um and just this nation you know because i love this place <laughs> are you able are, are you able to actually get up and touch the, mm -hmm. uh, the the spire oh dude that's uh because there's there, uh, there there's something you said a couple things that are really important here because people might be like the washington monument what the fuck um but uh first off egyptian like 
why is there an Egyptian fucking monolith in the middle of Washington, D.C.? Because this is the same empire. It's the same empire. Um, and so, uh, like, the, the, the same power structure has existed all the way, even if it's a, what I would consider to be a hidden empire. It's not like it's the same rulers passing the torch, but it's the same spiritual authority directing this. Um, and, and so that, but then also... Um, sacred uh, geometry like the, the fact that it's a, it's a specific height and specific width uh specific angles for specific reasons um it's even from what i understand with washington monument the way it's angled and positioned is uh is specific with uh, astrology and with the mm -hmm. the, the it, it, so so all of this is is focused and then you see like what is this it's a giant spire you can see it like a like a, a lightning rod that's that's pulling power just down from the heavens into this rod so and, yeah and and, and, and and one of the things, too, that they were showing me with this, like, with any pyramid, with any obelisk that has a point like that, that, you know, that point, of course, is, is a, a, a point of power, but it's also a, it's a calling, um, it's a calling for an anointing from God to place his finger, him or her, him and her, to place their finger upon the tip and anoint it with their blood. And so that's something that, you know that 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 I'm doing, um, you know, in a ritual manner during that. You know, and it's so cool because it, it's so crazy. Several people have like Sarah's performed this with me. I think twice. Um, Earl Rackley, shaman sorcerer, came out here. He performed it with me, and it, it is so insane. Like once you start this right, and you um, those cloaking that that cloaking magic begins to take effect you will see that like no one even looks at what you're doing like we we had a whole black magic ritual up going on out there i've done this several times no one even looks at you and and like the same thing i do i have a huge cauldron in a fire pit right out here in my front yard there's people that walk on the sidewalks and people that drive by like once you initiate that cloaking mechanism, no one even pays any mind to what you're doing whatsoever. And like it is, it's it's pretty trippy when you see it, like in in full effect. It's it's wild. Uh, but you can sign up for that um, JD Temple dot, or you can email me at JD Temple Healing at gmail dot com. I don't have that on my website. I'm still figuring out how to uh, work that myself because I'm not a tech savvy dude. So the way that my stuff works is you just have to email me. I'll let you know what information I need and I'll give you the cash app or the PayPal options and we do the transaction like that. I'll send you the ritual video and the invocation instructions and all that in the email uh, once we're done with it. So yeah, and, and I'll put that down below. Both of your both oh, yeah. of your guys' stuff. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, that, and I want to be a part of yours too, Al. That's coming up, man. I want to be a part <sighs> oh, of. That. Dude. What do you got coming up, uh, Al? So I'm going out to see J.S. Garrett and also do some filming for the Radionics course for next year. I'm um, going out there in two days. So on the 12th, and everyone has till noon on the 12th, to sign up for the kingmanship and queenmanship of uh, whoever signs up. So it's for the Santolak and King Beleth, a uh, ritual sacrifice to each of them to just empower you on your path and also knowing your vision. So with Santolak, it's about giving you that vision, vision to give you that uh, constant wealth growth. But then having King Beleth giving you the path on how to get there. And it's also going to put you in that right energy of royalty to where you understand your self-worth. And then you're going to realize the people around you who are helping you become that king or queen of your life. And then the people who are pulling you down and just trying to keep you down. So it's going to be one mm -hmm. hell of a projectile of growing your own empire with a way for continual wealth, not just here's some money here and there, but like actual ways to take you to the place you'd like to. Because, you know, to grow our empire, we have to be able to have all the different facets, you know, from the connections to the direction to the willpower. All, all these things build what it takes. And this ritual right here is going to be that ritual. And it's actually the ending of a path working for my first pact with King Belov, and uh, it's gonna be fucking badass. That's all I can say. So <laughs> that's cool, dude. One, that, one I, thing, I definitely want to be a part of that one. I want to definitely sign up for sure. Hell yes. yeah! Hell one yeah! Thing, one thing with uh, Belov that's interesting. It's interesting that you're including him in this because uh, he can. 
he can really easily silently destroy obstacles. Like when I say silently, without you even having to know what those obstacles are, you like you go to do something, you're like, that's not even a problem. Like, I see this problem was here, it's not there anymore. You just walk fucking freely to where you want to go. He just like removes, opens doors as you walk through them. It's fucking nuts. So well, instead of being so knocking on a door, you're just a king able to open the door now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's that's awesome. Uh, a little note, dude, uh, JD. That's the, uh, I, I'm I'm really. Uh, it does something special to you to me to hear that Earl Rackley is joining in on on on, on that ritual and is working with you because that guy, he's he, he uh, for years, probably like more than a decade, he has been hardcore chasing his ascent, and mm -hmm. and I've seen some of the stuff. I remember a Beelzebub ritual I did with him that was just off the charts, and then I, I from from my vision. Because I don't know everything that's going on in that dude's life, just from like making contact with him for different stuff. That Beelzebub ritual just transformed him, and he has yeah. just evolved. So that's that's so cool to hear that he's jumping into these major rituals at this point. Yeah, dude. Yeah, he he went to DC with me and performed that right, and then he came back, and and <laughs> I had a shoulder injury for like five months, and it fucked my life up for <laughs> for this half of this first half of 2023 was pretty miserable for me, uh, health wise. And um, it sucked, man, because he was in town and I was hurting. I wasn't feeling good, dude. I was struggling, man. And like we had just gotten off of like a three hour car ride on the way back. It might even been like four hours. It was like midnight. I was just ready to fucking get, you know, heap into bed and call it a day. And he was like, no, dude, like I need to help you like right now. And I was like, right now. And he was like, yes, come in here. So he came in there, he got the ritual set up, he called on Raphael, and he put everything into it, man. It was crazy. He fell the fuck out on the floor and shit at the end of it. <laughs> I swear, dude, like, he healed my shoulder. And, like, I couldn't, I, dude, I could not do anything, man. Like, it was really, you know, and, and for him, uh, you know, for him to, like, to, you know, as a healer, being able to heal heal energy and heal you know emotional pain and, and and move energy and help people to find relief within themselves and that way is one thing but to heal actual physical pain is a whole nother level you know and i was like dude like that was fucking amazing you know and and so he definitely um you know he's he's not giving himself credit and i think that's you know a lot of us are guilty of that most of us are guilty of that you know and that's like a big part of i could see what was standing in his way is him just not seeing like look what you're doing dude like <laughs> you're doing it like holy shit you know yeah. dude I had, I had this dude uh, um jump on a consultation with me and he's all he's all i really can't see anything i need to open my vision i'm like okay cool so tell me about something that maybe you have seen what's a more, what's a recent experience of something that you've tried to do he's like well i was trying to summon this uh um the some 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 female entity into a uh, to summon her and see her through the scrying mirror. I'm like, oh, and you, you didn't see anything? He's like, no, no, no. I saw the the, the, the light, and then I kind of, I thought I started to see a woman. I'm like, yeah, and he's like, yeah, she was wearing like a, this uh, kind of bluish white dress that you could, it was like transparent, and her hair was blown behind her. And I'm like, dude, you just barely told me you can't see shit. Like, you, you started this out by telling me you can't see, but you're describing this woman down to the fine detail. And he's like, well, I just didn't think that I, the, I just didn't think that I had seen her. And I was like, that's that's the thing. Your your mind, your brain starts getting in the way and telling you a story that's not not really true. That's why that's why I'm always saying drop mind, don't think about it, just have the experience and I, I, but I can see the like not wanting to take credit because like all of these things are so yeah, I I never feel like I do the magic. I feel like the magic comes through me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's that, not like that's, my that that that's totally I mean, I do the black web. I am just a facilitator, kind of like what you're saying with Lilith and the Psyche Bi. Like, I'm just a facilitator. Like, I let him have his energy within my temple. We do whatever. Something. Usually, everyone there's something a little bit different. I do with every single person because I'm just just doing what I'm told, and then it's done. And then to hear back feedback, wow, there's a change, and how amazing, and like clarity of mind, whatever the case may be. And to me, I'm just like, wow, like. Thank you to the spirit. Now, I'm thankful to myself for fucking doing the work to be able to step up to the plate to do and facilitate, but it's not all me. So it's like we got to give ourselves credit and then you got to thank the spirits too. You know, you just slap your ass, yeah, slap yourself. I, I will say, after you did that, the, uh, the web ritual for me, dude, like it definitely lifted. I was having 
major, major anxiety issues prior to that, and it helped with that a hell of a lot, dude. Like, it helped to lift a lot of that. And, like, you know, anxiety for a lot of people is one of the big ones that, like, prevents them from doing anything. You know, like, anxiety will, will, will shut everything down like that. Yeah. And, and so for people that... Um, for people that have a hard time, especially with that, I would definitely say that right will definitely give them relief and help them big time. At least it did for me in my case. Hell yeah. Well, thank you so yeah. much. I appreciate it. Oh, that. dude, yeah. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. I love the magic. Well, thank you all, both for coming on here. Um, oh, yeah. I'm going to stop the recording. I just want to ask you both one question real quick. But everyone, be sure to like and subscribe to all of our channels. All the links are down below. And more of these uh, roundtable discussions will be had. So tune in and thank you all so much. Blessings. Thank you, guys. Thank you. talking about this Friday, October the 13th, the Rite of Amatas taking place at the Washington Monument. Moth of the Mystic and I will be traveling up to DC to perform this anointing ritual of the Washington Monument, um, calling forth Asmodeus and Azazel to bring forth the current, the protective and cloaking current of Amatas. And that will be bestowed upon each and every participant that takes place in this group ritual. Um, we are extending this to, to the uh, immediate family of everyone that signs up. You would just send their information along with your selfie, your name and date of birth include your family members your immediate family we will include them in the ritual free of charge uh, for this protection this element of protection and of cloaking both physical and magical cloaking these are egyptian mysteries that are tied to the monument that are tied to the magical layout and imbuement of washington dc and of what protects this continent of north america uh, and what has been protecting um, this country, the United States, since the beginning. Um, these are ancient Masonic 
mysteries. These are ancient Egyptian mysteries. And this current, this energy of Amatas is by far the most protective current um, and most protective magical element and quality that I have ever been that I have ever worked with, that I have ever stumbled upon. Um, there will also be a channel power number that each participant will get that will be channeled by us while we are there performing that ritual. This will be my fourth time anointing this monument with blood. To, in order to activate it and to energize it, to really um, bring alive in our reality this mystical, ancient, mysteries that is that monument that is the Egyptian mysteries um, you can see like I told you in my video a few days ago maybe a week ago that we were in the quiet before the storm a lot of things are changing day by day in our reality all over the world it's undeniable the direction that things are moving and magical and physical protection and cloaking are vital um, it is vital to begin to ascend as quickly as possible. Um, not to be a fear monger, but you don't have all the time in the world. <laughs> and I sense that and see that. And that is why I'm taking magical action. That is why I'm taking physical action. Mothra and I both are this Friday, the 13th, in Washington, D.C. Um, I hope that you will want to join us in our endeavor in this um, this will be a very, very important and impactful ritual to take place in and to stick that feather in your magical cap repertoire there. So I love you all. I hope that you would join us on the 13th. Email me at jdtemplehealing at gmail.com. The Cash App and PayPal options will be there available for you. Um, again, the Rite of Amitas. It's going to include the ritual invocation. It's going to include a video on how to properly open this sigil and the other invocations that need to be recited in order to connect with this working fully. So we already have a lot of people that have signed up. I hope that we have a few more that will join us. Our energy culminating on the 13th will provide for a powerful, powerful black magic ritual. So thank you all in advance. Love ya. If you're new here, please subscribe. All the Soul Family members and channel members, I love ya. The World Heart readings are coming soon too. Promise. Love ya. See ya. Bye.